which I can touch upon in a moment. But just to give you a bit of an intro, just for those who haven't heard of Hands HQ before or um, not come, really come across us before. So Hands HQ, we are a software, a purpose-built software for the generation and management of risk assessments and method statements. Um, essentially, we are working with businesses who recognize that actually Word, Excel, or those manual methods aren't the most effective or efficient way to actually produce their documents. Um, so we really streamline that process, make it easy for everyone involved throughout the whole process. So whether you have been writing RAMs for 25, 30 years, or it's your first day on site, everyone's got the ability to create those high quality documents each time. So let me just jump onto the system now. Uh, so first questions, uh, will the recording be available for this webinar? Yes, it will be. Um, we've got G here who's going to be recording the webinar for us so we can send this out to you after. And we also have a question from Ian. Can people combine RAMs and CPP? Yes, there is a CPP function available on the system. We're going to look at the RAMs today, but the CPP function is pretty much very similar, uh, if not pretty much the same, just asking a few extra questions um, to create those CPPs. Great. So hopefully everyone should be able to see my screen just moving up and down at the moment. So this is the Hands HQ website. This is uh, or the system. This is actually when you log into Hands HQ, this is where you would come to. So Hands HQ is a web based and a cloud based system. So it essentially means that providing you have an internet connection, you can always jump into the system and, and generate those RAM. So it gives you that sort of le uh, level of flexibility that you might not have at the moment with Word, Excel and PDF. So, you know, you could be out on site, um, on your tablet. Uh, you can even read and, and sign off on RAMs on your phone, or you can be out in the office on your desktop laptop. You can always log in and, and start updating a document that you might have started two days before or, or whenever, collaborate on documents with other, other individuals as well. So when you sign in, the first page you come to is your projects page. This is going to be your page where all of your different projects that you've created will live. So we can see here um, all of our project names. And we've also got a uh, red, uh, well, sort of a rag system, if you like, um, which is our, anything green means that it's a currently a live project. Anything gray is a project that's finished. And if we do have any yellow, which I don't at the moment, that means we've got project with a future start date. So RAMs that you've created for two, um, three weeks time or whenever that may be. So we've got our project name, client details, reference numbers, when that document's last updated. We do have, which I will touch upon today, our risk register. So you can see whether you, all of your risk assessments are up to date or whether you have um, any individual risk assessments that need updating. We can also create approval processes as well, which I'll touch upon um, shortly. Um, if we uh, click here, then you do also have the ability to duplicate any documents. So it may be if you're doing some very sort of like, like maintenance tasks or reactive works, something that's very similar to, um, you know, re repetition of a job that's happened two, three weeks ago, whenever it may be, you do have the ability to duplicate a RAMS um, and then actually update some of that content um, there rather than having to start from scratch. Having said that, the process is so straightforward and simple to be able to start from scratch each time that really you wouldn't really need to duplicate documents too much. Um, so for some of our larger um, customers, we do have the ability to actually split Hands HQ up into different divisions through the arrow up at the top. So if you do have certain divisions that, you, that you want certain content with or that might have a slightly different workflow, you can split the system up regionally as well if you wanted to, then we can do that through our divisions bar up at the top left. But let's jump into the exciting bit. Let's go through and create our RAMS document. So first step is selecting new project. So when we select new project, it's a four step process to create our site specific RAMs. The first step is our details. So very straightforward. It's literally just filling in um, sort of our empty boxes that it's telling us to. So let's just call this uh, webinar RAMs uh, for everyone. We can add our, add our reference um, number for our job, add our start and end date. So let's say this is a RAMS document that's with job we're starting next week and it's going to be running for a week. We can add any client um, reference numbers in as well. Let's just say Hands HQ is the client. It's also so very straightforward at this step too. You can add in your principal designers and contractors if need to be too. So our locations of work, let's just go with Smith Street. Great. So once we've added in uh, this information, pretty straightforward, as I mentioned, we can then move through to our next step. Um, and this is really where we come into the sort of secret source of Hands HQ. 
this next step is really where I see the sort of main benefits of the system coming from. Um, it's probably worth uh, touching upon the sort of benefits um, here actually as well. So I think one of the biggest aspects of Hands HQ is the ability, uh, well, sort of the level of control you have over the content that those individuals and the team will use. So they'll have access to this main library, which they can essentially go through, select and pull through the information that's applicable for their, for their job, for their project that they're working on. Um, the big benefits here is the fact that because there's that sort of level of control, everyone is using the same content each time and then making it site specific. So you know for a fact that you're going to have that sort of high level of quality and consistency each time. But also because a lot of this content can be updated and managed by the health and safety team or an individual within the business, those that want to maybe get involved or should be involved with writing rams who don't at the moment because maybe they don't have the confidence to do so, now they're going to be using content which is being updated um, and managed by an individual or the health and safety person at the business, they can really actually get involved and have the confidence to do so. Obviously there is the time aspect as well, but that's sort of like the cherry on the top. And um, yes, we can save a lot of time, but it doesn't um, cause any effect to the quality of the documents. So now we're in the second step, our uh, library. So really what we're looking for at this point is to go through and select risk assessments that are associated with our project. So in the first step, let's say arrival and departure from site, we can select this as our sort of task and then go into edit. We'll then have all of our associated risk assessments for um, arrival and departure from site. This is where we can go ahead and make these site specific. So we can deselect any of the risk assessments that aren't applicable for our site. You know, we've noticed, okay, we don't have any overhead cables on our site, so we can deselect it. As we go down below, we can see that leave this selected because yes, there is the potential that, um, that the falling load can happen on our site. So we can leave this selected, but then we can actually go into edit. And this is where we can go ahead and make this site specific. So we can add a little bit of information in here that we need to. Um, and this is going to be on Smith Street, which is where our job's taking place. So you've got your hazards, your five by five risk matrix, your control measures as well, which we can update and change that information. And then we've got a residual risk as well. It's worth noting that when you do make any changes to this content, you're only making a change for this project. So the next time you create a brand new project, it will almost reset itself to that sort of standard set list of information. So everyone's working off the same page um, each time they're, they're writing those documents, the same starting point. So if we just move back into our library, then at this point we can go through and start selecting some more elements that are associated to our job. It's worth noting as well, actually, that all of the content that you're seeing here is the standard hands HQ library. So you would have access to all of this content. Um, however, what we are able to do is actually create a bespoke library for you. So based on whatever content you have at the moment, as part of the onboarding process, we can pull all of that information over to Hands HQ um, for you. And that would be part of our sort of enterprise um, solutions and packages. So we work with a, a wide variety of different um, industries from events and TV, special effects, all the way to sort of those high risk um, civils and um, high voltage electrical companies as well. So we can really um, make this library suit you and be very bespoke to your sort of day-to-day -day activities. So as we come through, let's go with electrical, for example, we can select electrical and uh, let's say we're gonna be installing lighting on our site. So as I mentioned, we're just going through and selecting those different elements to build our job up. We can then go through into our next step. This next step is um, where we come through to our sequence of operations. Now, essentially what this is, is this is the way that you would like the team to go about uh, completing the job in the safest possible way. This is the sequence that you would like them to be following. So we selected electrical, therefore it's only pulling through um, any jobs that are associated or any tasks that are associated to electrical. So you're not going to have to filter through a full list. Um, it's just going to be anything that's very specific to those selections beforehand. So in electrical, let's say once again, we're installing lighting then this is the standard sequence that you would like the team to be following at this point. We can deselect any of the sequence that isn't applicable for our site. We can drag and drop the sequence around if we needed to change it for our project. We can add any further information in as well if we needed to. Once again, the element of making it a little bit more site specific. And then we can also add any images in that we wanted to as well. So if you really wanted to make this a more pictorial RAMS document, then it's very straightforward, very easy to do so through this um, section here. Great if there are any sort of language barriers on site, then you've got the ability to um, upload those images. 
And then we come through to our uh, final step of the process, which is our method statement. So really at this point, the information that we've pulled through from our two previous steps, once again, any um, associated information um, based on those selections is now gonna be pulled through into this uh, final step of the process being our method statement. You've got the ability to free text in any of the fields. If, for example, you didn't want any of this information, we can even delete it as standard so it won't show up or you can just get rid of it and then the title won't show up in the final document either. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned, all of this information has been pre-populated for us, but then we can go ahead and make this site specific um, as and when we need to. Um, you do also have the ability to upload any images as well, which I'll be able to show you an example of. Um, very, very straightforward to do. I know that when using Word, it can be an absolute pain to format documents. You spend uh, an hour writing your document, you drag and drop an image in, and all of a sudden um, your text just blows up. It's all over the place. and You've got to spend 20 minutes trying to reformat everything and get it back to where it needs to be. Uh, Hands HQ just makes that very straightforward. Um, upload that image and it's going to pull through straight into your document. You can change the size to it and you can also size of it. You can also rotate it if you wanted, what, if you needed to. Then you can also add um, a caption as well. So if we just call this site, for example, we can add those captions in too. So as we scroll down, you've got the ability to add your hazard substances icons. I'll show you how we can actually add a cost assessment and create a cost assessment uh, within here as well and attach that to our project. And then we've also got the ability to add our PPE. We have our five points of PPE as standard selected here, but you can just go ahead and select any more that you need to. Great, so once we've done a method statement, we can move through to our next step. And believe it or not, that's just done. We have now created our RAMS document. So we've got a risk assessment, sequence operations, and our method statement. I'll show you what that document looks like in a moment. Um, it's worth mentioning you can always jump back into the risk assessment at any point that you need to. So if the job changes, the environment changes ever so slightly, or there's an additional task that you want to add to your risk assessment, then you can do so. Let's say if we're now um, working adjacent to a railway line, for example, we can select this, save and ex exit. It's going to ask us for a reason as to why we're editing. So if we just say, um, uh, added risk assessment. You can then move through to our next step. Obviously you can put more detailed description in there, but what's really great about this is actually within your activity tab, you can see how that document changes over time. So you've got that full audit trail. So this is where the document started. This is who created it, when it was created. And these are the changes that have been made and the reasons for those as well. If you ever wanted to actually show proof of that, then you do have the ability to download previous versions of that document as well. So you're actually gonna be able to sort of download it and show proof. This is the first document and this is the this is version two when it's been updated and so on. So let me show you how we um, create a cost assessment. I appreciate that this probably is a very manual process for a lot of people as well. Um, very straightforward to be able to do this. We just hit add cost. This is going to pull through our Kosh library. So this is a library. I think we've got about 10 and a half thousand substances um, in here at the moment. It's always growing, uh, but essentially it's shared across all of our larger customers. So as and when a substance that isn't within the system needs to be added, we just ask for the SDS sheet from you and we can add it. Very straightforward with the way it works. So you search for the substance that you're going to be using. So Mastic, for example, you find the right substance, which we can select, then go into edit. Then it's going to pull through, uh, once again, boxes that's sort of prompting us, we need to fill in this information. So, you know, you've got your quantity kept on site. Um, you've got drop down menus for your um, exposure, frequency, where it's going to be used. And then it's going to pull through um, all of your first aid and PPE requirements based off the SDS sheet as well. So all of that information that we've uh, pulled from the SDS sheet is going to be pre-populated for you automatically. We can then select update, add any further substances that we need. So if you've got multiple on site, then you can do so. Um, if not, we can move back to our project. Once again, in our documents tab, we can now see that our cost assessment has been bolted onto the bottom of the document. Um, and our activity tab is growing as well. I'm just gonna show you um, the approval process before I show you the sign off process and actually uh, what the document looks like. So the approval process was created for, let's say if there's a, a team of engineers out on site and um, before uh, the engineers are to sign off, uh, well, they've created a RAMS, but before they send it to the client, they wanted internal approval, then all they would have to do is find 
who their health and safety manager is or who the health and safety director is, select their name. They can then hit submit for approval. The health and safety manager or ops director, whoever it is, projects director that might be signing off on these rounds internally, would then receive an email to say, um, Joe Blogs has created webinar rounds, please sign off. They can then click the link, see the document, and then just, just be able to say, yes, best rams ever and then approve that document so now that's had the internal sort of sign off the internal sort of thumbs up to say yeah good rams these can now be sent to the client which i'll show you how we can distribute those documents shortly the next step after that would obviously be sending this rams document out to the operatives that are going to be that this rams is actually be created for so what we'd have to do is uh, hit uh, personnel we can then add a member of the team so let's go with alan we can add Alan, we can see that he's an electrical engineer, which gets pulled through. Also that his training status is valid for the project. So this is a separate product that we have, which is our training uh, register. We can, we'll probably be doing another uh, webinar on that um, in a few few weeks or a few months time. So we'll let you know, I'll touch upon it very briefly later, but essentially it's pulling through to say that Alan's training records are up to date and actually he's um, sort of the thumbs up for him to be able to go on site and do the work that he needs to. What we can then do is actually send this out to um, our team. So we can ask everyone to sign the latest version. What this is now going to do is it's going to send an email out to Alan. If Alan's out on site or wherever he may be, would then receive an email, open, on, open the email up on his phone and then be able to read through the document, turn the phone to the side and actually digitally sign off of his signature. If, however, um, someone's actually signed in on their, the system, you can jump into um, their name, go to actions, and then be able to sign now. So what's great about this is, um, first we're gonna read through the document, but it's actually gonna take an image of the person that's signing that document. So we know when someone's signed on their phone, it's gone to them, it's gone to their email address, it's them signing off on it. But on the system, it's actually gonna take an image of them, which I'll show you later, just to make sure that we're doing our due diligence, getting the right people signing off on the right documents. So. This is the final document that's created. Obviously, you'd have your own branding and business information here, which we can pull through. Um, but starts off with our sequence operations and then goes into our um, method statement. So our icons get pulled through. So all of the formatting is done for you. So the one thing that, that I like to say to a lot of our clients is you never have to worry about formatting a document ever again. You can focus on the content, which is obviously the important part. And Hans HQ would do the heavy lifting in terms of putting all of your content together in a, in a nice PDF document. We can see that our image gets pulled through as well, formatted for us. And then as we come off the back of the method statement, we come to our risk assessment. So our five by five grid gets explained for us. And then you've got your hazards and your control measures as well. The formatting of these documents, I think is really nice. I've seen, I've had the pleasure of reading hundreds of risk assessments from, from different businesses. One thing that I sort of see in common is just how much content is thrown onto one page. Um, it's all well and good for the health and safety managers or the people that write the document, but for those that are picking them up on site and looking at them, um, you know, I highly doubt anyone really wants to read something with such small text. So we've laid ours out in a way that's very easy to sort of pick up and pull out the information that you need to. Um, it's worth mentioning as well that these documents, you can really make them as, as short or as long as you want them to, really depending on how much content or what content you want to be putting into these documents. So as we shoot down off the risk assessment, we come to our supervision and personnel. This is essentially all of our individuals within the business that are going to be working on the site. So who the RAMS has been created for. When I sign this in a moment, the signature is going to be in print on here. That's going to be pulled through digitally. And then as we come off the back of the signature page, we come to our cost assessment. So um, our cost assessment is created for us with that information that we've input and the SDS sheet gets bolded onto the back of the document as well. So you can decide whether you want the SDS there or not. It's completely up to you, um, but uh, tick, of a, tick of a box and you can make it disappear. Depends what your clients are, are looking for essentially. So Alan in this case has read through the document, is happy to sign off. So we can just select um, accept. As I mentioned, this is now going to take um, an image of the person that's actually signing that document, really to make sure that we're getting the right people sign off on the right documents. If there was ever a, a uh, hopefully the images are going to be a little bit nicer than that. If there was ever a near miss um, or an incident on site, 
then you can always refer back to these and make sure that you can actually find out, yes, we've got the right people signing off on these documents. Um, the managers, so essentially we can create different levels of access. The managers would be the ones that are able to sort of pull out and, and see this information. Um, the images aren't gonna be pulled through onto the final document, just the signature is. Once again, in the activity tab, we can see how that document um, is progressive. And we've now got version one and it's actually been signed by our individuals at the business too. So from here, uh, obviously you've got the ability to edit the project if any time you wanted to jump back in and make any updates. We can preview the document again, download it as a PDF if, if we wanted to. Um, we've also got the ability to email these documents and distribute them out straight to our clients or whoever you might want to send this email to or the RAMs to. So actually it's... Um, something so for those who have seen the system before this is a brand new update that we've um, essentially put live over the last couple of days um, but, but now we've got the ability to yeah obviously add whoever you want this email to go to decide what documents you want to be sent so obviously we've got our rams the training report is essentially those that are going on site if you've got access to the training register it's going to pull through all of their qualifications for you then we can add our body of email and decide whether actually these RAMs need a password or not. So only um, applicable people can actually be open in these documents. So what's going to happen is when we send this to our clients, they would then receive an email like so. This email um, would then contain the documents which they can then download. It's going to take them to a link and this link will open up this page for them, which they'll then be able to um, either view or download those RAMS documents that they need to. For some of our larger packages, we do have the ability to add your own specific brand in onto this page as well. Um, so effectively or almost sort of white labeling the uh, download page here for when you do send these off to your clients. So if I just jump back um, to this page, so this was obviously our RAMs now created. So if we go back to our projects page, uh, we can then see that that RAMs document um, is up at the top here that we've just created. Obviously it's yellow at the moment, meaning that that's a project that's got a future start date. So in, um, you know, a week's time for this one, that's when um, this RAMs has been created for a project. Um, do want to just quickly touch upon a few of the uh, added features up at the top here uh, that we have. So risk register. Risk register is for some of our larger packages. This is where actually we'll be able to manage all of your risk assessments. So you can update them if there's a near miss, um, say, for example, on one site, you've got the ability to update an individual risk assessment. When you update that risk assessment, that will be pushed through into the main library. So, the, so your team have got the confidence they're always using the most up to date recent um, information, the recent risk assessments that they need to. Um, and you know that I know a lot of the time using Word, Excel, there's a lot of copy and paste and someone might be using version one of a risk assessment when version 10 is already out. That won't happen with Hands HQ because you're always pushing out the most um, up-to-date information. We then also have um, our personnel tab, which as I mentioned is essentially our training register. So it's a digital version of our training matrix. Um, you can hold all of your um, employees details in here um, and also have their um, sort of proof of qualification. So uh, certificates, PDF versions of their certificates or images of their CSCS card, whatever it may be, you can hold in here too. But we'll probably do a separate webinar on that um, at some point as well. Uh, any questions, feel free to throw those in. There might be uh, a few bits of the system that some might want me to touch upon again. Um, so please do feel free to throw some questions at me. I think I've got a couple here. Um, Andy, thanks for your message. Hi, can RAMs be signed on site on a paper copy if extra people turn up? Yep, so we can create an ad um, on the back of the um, document, just a blank sign-off sheet. So if you did want to print them off, then we can do so. Um, and yeah, individuals can just sign their name. You can always scan those back in or take an image and actually upload them back into the system as well. So you do have the ability to upload any further PDFs onto the back of the document, whether that be insurances, certificates, or as you mentioned, like a register uh, for those individuals that turn up to site, which you don't expect to. Uh, is there a function uh, to have RAMS approval notifications via Teams instead of email? Uh, good question. Um, I do know that we have um, some form of sort of API on our system to look at um, integration. So it could be something that we look at whether or not it's possible. I don't 100% know, but um, I can definitely find out um, for you. Uh, typical uh, cost for the system, it massively varies. Uh, I know that's probably a big question for everyone. Um, it's yeah, varies massively. There's packages on our system that cost 
uh, I think thirty pound a month, uh, all the way up to uh, you know a couple of thousand pounds, depending per annum, depending on what it is that you need, uh, what features you have, usage, and so on. But feel free to get in touch, and I can um, I can give you a breakdown of the different prices and figure out what best fits um, you as a business. Uh, Ian, thanks for the question. So, what devices are compatible? So. Uh, multitude of different devices you can use uh, because it's a web-based uh, platform. Uh, you don't have to download an app as such. So uh, yeah, rather than download an app, as long as you've got internet connection, and you've got an internet uh, device, uh, then, then you can access the system and um, create RAMs and, and do, do what you need to on the system. So whether that's Android or iOS, you'll actually be able to access um, Hands HQ just through your web browser. Any other questions at all? Feel free to fire some in. Uh, we've got a couple of minutes now. Uh, I think we've got one more coming in. Just jump off here. Um, is there a way to add a short list at the start of the document that shows anything that's um, out of the ordinary? There's a usual way for carrying out most of our tasks and we don't want um, any small tweaks to those to get lost in the document body. Yeah, so I guess with the setup of the system, so the onboarding process of what we would do for some of our sort of larger customers who have bespoke uh, content, uh, we can set the system up with the way that you would like it to be set up essentially. So um, how you would like your content laid out um, and what information that you want to hold within those, we can help out and you know figure out what you want to achieve and then figure out whether it's actually possible within the system. But the best way to explain it in a way that a client explained it to me before, when it comes to setting up Hands HQ and with the content of Hands HQ and what can be edited and what could be changed, the best way to describe it is you can change the wallpaper, but you can't change the walls. So the process is going to stay the same throughout. Um, so that four step process is going to stay the same. But in terms of the content, that can be changed and that can be updated to, to show and uh, to tell what you need it to. Uh, few more questions. Um, do you have a section for recording halves? We don't as such. Uh, I mean, we can add a section on to the, I know a couple of our clients have added a section to their method statement for halves and they've put a, a table in there. But if you're actually looking for a software to record that, then no, but we can always add a section into the um, method statement if you need to. It would be manual recording those though. Um, Mike, uh, is the onboarding included in the package? Um, so for more of the, um, sort of onboarding that's for our sort of enterprise. There is um, usually a fee for that depending on what sort of level of um, sort of training you would need, level of customization. Uh, but once again, I can sort of break that down for you and figure out your requirements and, and, and what you would need. Um, Rachel, hi, thanks for joining. Um, can you give us more information on the creation and how this fits in the CPP? Of course. So with the CPP, the process is pretty much exactly the same as what you've just seen me do there for the RAM. So it's still gonna be that four step process. Just the first step that we go through being the sort of project details, that's where it's gonna ask you more questions about principal contractor, principal designer, um, and all of the information that you would need as part of your CPP. So yeah, that process is, is pretty much gonna look the same and feel the same. It's just gonna ask you some more questions. And then the final document as well is gonna be pulled out looking a little bit different. Uh, with that sort of added information that you need to. Um, Loretta's just asked a question about pricing as well. Uh, if you're having a look at our pricing on our website um, and you think that actually you're going to be doing uh, more uh, projects than, than some of those pricing, they are our sort of self-serve pricing. So we would probably tend to see some of our sort of uh, smaller customers or customers that actually don't need too much customization or aren't doing too many projects. If you are doing a high number of projects, then please do get in touch with myself and I'm happy to talk through your requirements, understand what it is that you need, and then be able to sort of tell you what best package you best fit on um, and actually what the price is for those as well. Great, so I can't see any more questions coming through at the moment. Please do, uh, last opportunity to get your questions in. If there are any unanswered questions, then I will uh, be able to get in touch with you over the next couple of days. Um, ask for any feedback on the webinar as well, but also um, answer some of your questions. If you did want to get in touch with myself, um, then please feel free to do so. You should be able to see my email on the screen at the moment. So feel free to put me an email and uh, happy to answer any of your questions and give you a, a sort of idea on pricing for you as a business because they do um, differ um, slightly. 
have a quick question here from Reza. Thanks for the message. Apologies, missed the beginning of the webinar. Yes, there will be a recording. Um, G will be able to render the video today and hopefully get that across to everyone um, within the next couple of hours or hopefully by the end of, uh, at least by the end of this week, uh, being tomorrow with it being bank holiday. Any last questions at all? Otherwise, I think that's pretty much everything. We'll be doing, I'm sure we'll be doing a few more um, sort of demo webinars in the future as well, looking at other elements of the system. So probably the next one that we'll have is the training register. So how the training register, how we can track and manage our employees' uh, training certificates and, and competencies, and actually how that will link in with our RAMS documents as well. So we'll uh, be able to go through that in the next, next few months whenever we decide to run that webinar. So yeah, feel free to get in touch. Thanks very much for your time. Really appreciate it everyone jumping on today i'll let you get all back to your busy days i know the end of the month is always busy for everyone um so yeah feel free to get in touch if you've got any further questions happy to do another sort of one-on-one -on -one demo as well if you wanted to have a bit of a more detailed look at the system or different elements and how they would actually fit in with your current process um, what the onboarding process would look like and actually how we train up all of your team as well so yeah feel free to get in touch but thanks very much for for everyone's time today i really appreciate you joining have a lovely bank holiday weekend. Hopefully the sun stays out for everyone and I'm sure we'll catch up soon. Thanks very much, everyone. Speak soon.